pick up a book and read Open up the cover and read Read all the words inside Read Travel to a place and read Open up your mind and read Read, read, everyone read Read Pick up a book and read Open up the cover and read Read all the words inside Read Travel to a place and read Open up your mind and read Read, read, everyone read Okay, this time you have to say read Here we go Read Pick up a book and read Open up the cover and read Read all the words inside Read Travel to a place and read Open up your mind and read Read, read, everyone read Read, 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 everyone read My name is Mrs. Curvin and I'm an STPPS librarian. I'm so glad you could join me. Today I'm going to read you a story. It's called Just a Duck. The author is Karen Bramson. I read this to my nephew a few weeks ago and he really liked it so I thought you might enjoy it as well. As we're reading you may notice that this is a rhyming book. Remember rhyming words are words that sound the same at the end like cat and hat, dog and frog. Those are just a couple of examples. And as we're reading the story, see if you can figure out which words on each page are the rhyming words. So let's see what happens in Just a Duck. Again, the author is Karen Bramson, and she is also the illustrator of this book. My good friend duck, why slink like that? Well, can't you see? I am a cat. A cat? But you don't look like me. I will when I grow up. You'll see. My ears are still a little small. I don't see any ears at all. You don't? Fun fact, ducks actually do have ears. They are little holes in their head, but you usually can't see them because they're usually covered by feathers. But then again, you never know. They might just need some time to grow. So I could be a cat? Hooray! Then you and I can play all day. That does sound fun. Come follow me. I'll take you to my favorite tree. Oh, that's a pretty tree for sure. So pretty, I could almost purr. Well, yes. It's best for climbing, though. I'll race you to the top. Let's go! Here you see the little duck. He's trying to climb up the tree. And he falls down. But try, try again. Here he goes again. He makes it a little farther. And then, whoop, he flips backwards. Oh dear, this really is a shame. I think I'm off my climbing game. Now, now, we climb with claws, you know. Your claws might need some time to grow. Oh yes, I think they're still too small. I don't see any claws at all. Well, let's find things we both can do. Hey, there's a lake. Let's play canoe. Does the cat look happy? No, cats don't really like water, so I think he's not too happy about the canoe idea. No, let's play chase around the trees. And bat it leaves upon the 
Breeze. Oh, no. He went in the water. Don't worry, cat. I'll bring you back. We cats don't like to swim, but quack. Poor drippy cat. Are you all right? I'll push you to the shore. Hang tight. Here we go. He's pushing, he's pushing, he's pushing. Here we go. He made it all the way to the shore. Even though he's small, he was able to swim and push that cat to the shore. My friend, how do you swim like that? Are you some kind of super cat? Alas, I think it's just my luck to be no more than just a duck. No more than just a duck, you say? Why, you're the duck who saved my day. You're a real hero, don't you see? That you are just the duck for me. Oh, cat, you're a real hero, too. If only I could climb like you. But I know what we both can do. The drip, dry, shimmy, shake for two. So they're having fun shaking all the water off together. The end. So I know we're all stuck at home um, a lot right now. And maybe sometimes you get tired of being stuck at home with the same people all the time. And maybe um, the fact that you guys have differences maybe gets on your nerves every once in a while. So just try and remember to appreciate the differences um, in each other, just like Cat and Duck did in this book. Thank you for watching as we read today. You did a great job. And remember to keep watching other videos like this one so we can all keep learning together. You can watch lessons daily on STPPS TV or on our website at stpsb.org. See you again soon. My thumb is bent, pointer points to the tip, and the middle finger lays on its side. I tuck my other fingers in and take my pen for a ride. My thumb is bent, pointer points to the tip, tall man uses his side. I tuck my last two fingers in and take them for a ride. Sam here. I've been hearing the weirdest noises today. What? You guys see something? Oh, 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 oh my goodness! Oh, 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 what? 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 Who are you? What are you? Let me introduce myself. I am on. And I am Ugg. And we are Turkey! You want to eat me? Oh no, you'd be disgusting. We wish to feast on word families. Word families? Yes, word families. Take a look at my stomach. What do you see? Ugg. Right, now put a letter, any letter, in front of it. Well, my name, Sam, starts with the letter S. So I think I'm gonna put an S in front of it. Let's see. S-U-G. Sug. Yes. Now, if you put an R there, it would be rug. Sug and rug both end with ug, making them both part of the ug word family. That makes sense. And you? Written on me, meaning I like words that end in um. Add an F in front and make the word fun. Fun. Oh, 
what I see. All right, so why are you guys here again? We told you, we're hungry. And you have the word family snacks right there. But these are just pictures. Yes, of delicious word family words. We want them! All right, guys, I need your help. We're gonna have to sort these pictures into the correct word family. Our first picture, what's that? That's right, it's a sun. Sun, I guess we'll just go ahead and give it to Ugg. Here you go, Ugg. Oh, preposterous. That does not end with Ugg. Uh, you know, I think he's right. Sun, let's sound that out together. Uh, mm, sun. What's that ending sound in sun? Un. This picture must go to un. That's nasty. That was disgusting. All right, moving on. Our next word is run. Now, let's break this word apart. Er, un, run. Let's think. Does run end with ug or with un? Hmm. I think you're right. I think un ends with un. Let's give it to un. Oh, that was cool. You know, I am hungry as well. Well, Ugg, I'm sure one of the next pictures you might be able to eat. All right, guys, let's see what we have next. A mug. Let's sound that out. Mm, Ugg, mug. Hmm, does mug end with Ugg or un? Hmm. I think you are right, Ugg. Let's give it a shot. All right. Well, at least one of them kind of has some manners. Can you guys try to keep your food in your mouth? No promises. Well, it was worth a shot. Okay, our next picture is Aww. hug. Break it apart, my friends. Hug. Hug. Hmm, hug. Does it end with ug or un? Hug. You said you heard the ug sound at the end? Me too. All right, ug, you get another one. Oh, I wonder who we'll get to eat next. I hope it's me because I am the most beautiful. Everybody's gonna get some food. Our next word is bun. Hmm. Let's break it apart. B uh n bun. Does bun end with ug or un? Hmm. Yes, sorry. Bun ends with un. Bun. Here you go, un. Glad you find it tasty, Un. Our last picture is a bug. Ugh, gross. Bug. Let's break it apart. You knew it. B -u -g. Bug. Does bug end with ug or un? Mm hmm. Bug ends with the ug sound. So we're gonna go ahead and feed the last one to Ugg. Was it delicious? Most indeed. I'm glad. Phew, I'm so. And now we must depart. What? We're leaving. Did you guys come here just to eat? Naturally. Yes, why else would we be here? Well, Bye, Ugg. 
Bye on. Bye. 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 Wow, that was kind of weird. Well, thanks so much guys for helping me come and figure out which pictures went with what word family. I would have never been able to do it without you. Now, I'm feeling kind of hungry, so I'll see you later. My name is Paula Vickers and I am a St. Tammany Parish School music teacher for grades four, five, and six. I'm so glad you could join me for this lesson. In this lesson, we are going to explore bucket drumming. The supplies you will need are some sort of bucket and something to use as drumsticks. I have a drum right here. It's a bucket that I'm going to use for my drum. It's a big bucket. I also have a smaller one that's a mop bucket. You could use that. And then I found a couple of paint stirrers in my garage. And that is what I'm going to use for my drumming today on the buckets. Before we get into that, let's talk about a couple of famous drummers. The first drummer I'd like to talk about is Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr was the famous Beatles drummer. Many of you have heard of the Beatles, I'm sure. The other drummer who has been one of the most influential of all times is a jazz drummer by the name of Buddy Rich. He influenced a lot of modern drummers. Now, I grew up in a family with a drummer. My brother was a drummer. He was a little younger than I. And before he um, was even in band or uh, had his own drum set, he used buckets and garbage cans and anything he could find around the house to create his own drum set. And he would uh, play all kinds of things. He was either in the garage or in the um, living room playing the drums. Now let's go over the different parts of the bucket. We can create a lot of different sounds. We have the sides of the bucket, the sides. And if I strike it, it will get a different sound. Okay. Then we have the rim. Now, when I play this in a few minutes, I'm going to go stand behind it. And when you are playing the rim, you need to reach across the bucket and play the rim that's farthest away. It's much easier to play it that way. Then we have the top. 
And then we ha also have our sticks that we have chosen and we can put them in the shape of an X and strike them. These are kind of cool because I can strike them flat and get that sound or I can strike them on the edges and get that sound. It's just a little different. Listen to the difference. Now listen to the difference in these sounds. So we're going to do a four beat pattern using all of the different sounds that we just talked about. We're going to do side, top, rim, click. And I'm going to go stand behind my bucket and I'm going to play from behind the bucket because it will be much easier for uh, both of us. So the rhythm we're going to use is just strictly four quarter notes. We're going to use four quarter note patterns. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to go side, top, rim, click. Side, top, rim, click. Side, top, rim, click. Side, top, rim, click. Pretty simple. Let's do that together. And let's do it four times in a row. Side, top, rim, click. Side, top, rim, click. Side, top, rim, click. Side, top, rim, click. Very good. Now I want to do a popular song that I have heard many of you guys singing around schools. Everywhere I go, a lot of uh, students your age are singing this song. I have the instrumental version that I'm going to play in just a moment from my computer. But before we do that, before I tell you the song, we're going to learn a few rhythms that we could play. One is, and I'm gonna clap these rhythms first. One and two, three and four. Clap that rhythm with me. One and two, three and four. Why do you believe we clap the rhythm before we use it with our sticks or our instrument? Well, we take one of the objects away and it makes it easier to get the rhythm and then we can add it back with the uh, instrument and the instrument is much, plays much more easily because we're not having to think too many things at one time. So let me apply it to the sticks and we'll go one and two, three and four. One and two, three and four. Now the next rhythm is like this. One E and a two and three E and a four and. Do that with me. One E and a two and three E and a four and. Now let's apply it to the instrument. One E and a two and three E and a four and. Now if I wanna be really creative, I can change where I'm striking the bucket. One E and a two and three E and a four and. So I get the different sounds from hitting the top to the rim. Listen without me counting aloud. So it gives it some more uh, personality or uh, it makes it more interesting when you do that. Uh, the last rhythm is strictly all eighth notes. So it's one and two and three and four and. Do that with me. One and two and three and four and. So we're gonna go one and two and three and four and. Now I'm gonna use all three of those rhythms that I just taught you. All three of the rhythms. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be listening to the music and when the music changes, I'm going to change my rhythm. Now, it's really a fun song. It's called Old Town Road. I've heard a lot of students singing this song around and I'm going to get my computer and play it from my computer and we will add rhythm to it. Now, when I start with my music, I let the computer play a couple of measures, maybe one or two measures before I come in. That's four or eight beats before I come in. That way I get a really good feel for the song, okay? And then you just listen, and when um, a new section comes in the music, change what you're doing with your rhythm and play along with it. Don't get too complicated. These rhythms that I have demonstrated are simple rhythms. 
if you get too complicated, the song sometimes isn't quite as, as um, musical as we would want it to be. So let me get my music turned on and then we will do Old Town Road. For watching as we explore bucket drumming today you did a great job remember to keep watching other videos like this one so we can all keep learning together you can watch lessons daily on stp ps tv or on our website at stpsb.org see you again soon is Miss Collins and I am an STPPS kindergarten teacher. I'm so glad that you could join me today. In this lesson we're going to be learning about comparing numbers. We will compare numbers to find more and less. When I went outside yesterday I was looking at my pond and I saw some animals. I saw some frogs and I saw some fish and when I saw them I counted them and I noticed that I saw five fish and I saw three frogs. Now, I want to know what animal did I see more of? Did I see more frogs or did I see more fish? What could I do to find out? Anybody have any ideas? Ooh, I like that idea. We're going to draw a picture. So how many, if we're going to draw a picture, how many fish are we going to draw? That's right, we're gonna draw five fish. So let's count, are you ready? One, two, three, four, five. Now we need to draw the frogs. How many frogs did I see? That's right, three frogs. So let's draw three frogs. One, And then just draw his little froggy face. Remember to do your best drawing. Two. And now we have three frogs. Now it's kind of hard to look at that and see which one is more. So what is a way, what is a strategy that we could use 
so that we could see easier which one has more and which one has less. Does anybody know? Oh, so maybe if we drew them in a straight line and we lined them up, that's some really good thinking. Let's draw them that way and I think it'll be easier to count that way. Ready? One, two, three, four, five fish, and one, two, three frogs. So when we line them up, what do we notice? What do you notice when we line these up? What do you see over here? Oh, do you see that we have two extra fish over here? That when we line them up, we have one fish, one frog, two fish, two frogs, and three fish and three frogs. But we have these two extra fish over here. So that means that we see more fish than frogs. What is another way that we could check our answer? How could we check our answer to make sure that we're right? Oh, that's a really good idea. We could draw a number line on our paper to see where the numbers are on the number line. So I'm just going to draw a number line. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we know that we have three frogs and we know that we have five fish. So when we look at the number line, we know that as our number line goes this way, it gets bigger. Our numbers get bigger. So we, which number is further on the number line? Is three further along or is five further along? Oh, that's right. Five is further along on the number line. So by using our picture and lining them up, we were able to see that I saw more fish in my pond than I saw frogs. So we know that five is more than three. You guys did a great job. Thank you for watching as we learned about comparing numbers. Remember to keep watching more videos like this one so that we can continue learning together. You can watch other videos daily like these on STPPS TV or by going to stpsb.org. It was great having seen you guys today. Until next time, see you later. Well, I have it written here on the board, the exercises, and I have the iPad here to tell me uh, how many seconds we have to do each exercise and when to move on to the next one. So the way it's going to work is we're going to do four exercises for 20 seconds each, then we're going to rest for 20 seconds, then we're going to repeat those same four exercises for 20 seconds each. We're going to rest for 20 seconds. Then we're going to do that one more time. Then we're going to have a 30 second rest with four different exercises for 20 seconds each. Then we're going to rest for 20 seconds. Repeat those same four exercises for 20 seconds. Rest for 20. Repeat them one last time for 20 seconds each. Then we're going to be done. Woo! How does that sound? Sounds like it's going to be a really easy exercise routine, but I bet once you get started, you're going to say, Ooh, that was great. I really feel like my body was working because that's the idea behind exercises is exercising is to work your body. Your body is a machine. It needs these exercises to keep the blood flowing throughout it, to work the heart. And when you're working your body, and working your heart, it's actually helping your brain. So exercise helps you to do all your other school activities such as math and reading and uh, social studies, science, whatever it may be. But exercise is something you should do every day for at least 20 minutes, maybe 30. 
But this is probably about a 10 minute routine, maybe eight. And guess what? We're gonna do it together. So, I'm gonna demonstrate real quick. We have the frog hops. We have the mountain climbers. We have the low kicks. You can do them like this or down here. And then we have the seesaw. Then we have push-ups. Okay, and you'll be able to see these exercises again. Sit-ups. The half worm. This is a fun one. The half worm and lunges. Just getting up and down is some exercise. Especially for older people like me. But, okay, let's get started on this exercise routine today. I'm so glad you're here with me. All right. Oh, one last thing. Make sure that you have some water to drink in case you need it during your rest. I'm gonna give you about, oh, 10 seconds to go grab some water if you need it. Nine, eight, seven, four, three, two, all righty, let's get started. From house, 20 seconds, that's it. Woo, we've got this. We're doing this together. We're in this together. Remember, you can do this exercise routine with anyone in your household. Just people in your household. Mountain climbers. Mountain climbers. Later on, you can do these exercises with your friends. Soon. Okay, you can go a little faster if you'd like. Or slow it down. Whatever you need. Here come those low kicks. Now remember, you can do them here, or if you need to pick up the pace, put a little hop in it. Woo, yes! We are exercising together. We are feeling great. We are moving the body. We're off the couch. Seesaw. Seesaw. Try to keep the upper body from going side to side, and you're moving your legs. From just kicking side to side. Now remember, you can take the hop out if you're getting tired or if you're getting out of breath. But if you need to work, yes. oh, there's that rest. So, like I said, if you need water, now's a good time to grab a sip of water because we're going to do all that over again. So, we have frog hops. We have mountain climbers. Frog we have hops. Kip, here we go. And seesaw. Frog hops are first. Thank goodness for my friend the iPad here telling me when our time is up and what's going on next. Here comes those mountain climbers. Almost there. Mountain Woo, climbers. there they are. Okay. I'm going to try to go a little faster this time. <sighs> Yes, I'm feeling good, I'm working hard, and I know you're working hard with me, and I'm so proud of you for doing this exercise routine. Here comes those low kicks. All right, woo, let's put a hop in. Yes, this is so good for your body. This is getting the blood flowing. That heart is working. Here comes the seesaw. Okay. Seesaw. Oh, how we feeling? I love to exercise. This is something I do every day because I know it's good for my body. My goal might be different than your goal, but we all have to exercise. Whether rest. Whew, you might be exercising because. Uh, you just need to work your heart. Some people exercise because they sit too much and they need to move around. Remember to get that water if you need it. Oh, that's good for the body, water. How are we feeling? We're uh -huh. almost there. Oh, there. This is our last time doing these four exercises. So proud of you for hanging in with me. Now, uh, different exercises have different names. This could also be a squat jump with a touch 
but we're calling them frog hops. Mountain climbers. Mountain climbers. Now, going up a hill. No, got to go faster. Whew, slow it down. The hill got real steep. Just have fun with this. That's the whole idea. Have fun. That's the most important thing. Here we go with the low kicks. Just think. Oh, we're going to get a 30 second rest. Then we just got to do four more exercises. Three times each. And then we're done. And if you need more, do it again a little later. Seesaw. Just be careful not to overdo it. Okay? When your body feels like it needs rest, take the rest. You know what your body needs. Pay attention to how it feels when you're exercising. Rest. Woo! Okay. Now we have that 30 seconds in between. So, let me demonstrate real quick again. We have push-ups. We have sit-ups. Oh, one of my favorites right here. Whoop! That is called the half worm. I made that name up. And lunges. Okay, here we're going to start with those push-ups. Push I'll show you. You can do these for 20 seconds. Hands are underneath your shoulders. You can do them on your toes. If that's too hard, go to your knees. And if that's still too hard, come to all fours. Make sure that your fingertips are slightly spread sit apart. Okay, sit-ups. Moving on. Okay, touch the toes, hands behind your head, flat on the ground. Body's completely flat on the ground. Sit up, that's too hard. Bend your knees and just reach as far as you can without coming up off the ground. Remember, this Half is your worm. workout. Half worm. Back on our stomachs, we're gonna rock and push up. Rock and push up. Rock and push up. Now, if you can't do the rock, just push yourself up. Okay, you can always add the rock in later. Oh, the last one is standing back up again. Lunges. Oh, right. Oh, love this exercise. Lunges. Make sure you step it out far. 90 in the front leg, 90 in the back leg. These are lunges. If that's too hard, just don't go down as low for right now. Most important, make sure the yes. knee hook is not going over the toe. So while you're resting and grabbing water, good thing to also need some water too. I'm going to show you one more time. Lunge, knee is 90. Okay, perfect. Oh, here we go with those push-ups. Push good. On the toes, on the knees, on all fours. Now, you go at your level. I'm going to do all of them again. I'm going to mix them up so you can see. Toes. Sit-ups. Oh, sit-ups. These are fast, but this is a short and effective workout. It doesn't take long for you to feel like you're working. Remember, take it here if you need to. Oh, feels like forever. Oh, we're gonna roll over and have worm. Now, some of you can probably do the full worm. And if you wanna do that, in your house, you go right ahead. Oh, I love it. This is so great. It feels good to exercise. Lunges. Oh, lunges. Up and down, up and down. We're moving. We have a 20 second rest coming up. Now we're going to do our last round of those same four exercises. So now you know them, you can work a little harder on this last round because you know it's the end. Rest. Okay. You know the end's coming, so work as hard as you can on this last one. And remember, if you need to, you can do this again later. Kind of walk around. You don't want to sit down or stay still during your active rest time. This is active rest. Oh, here we go. Push Last ups. round. Let's work hard on this one. Push ups. Okay. I'm going to drop to my knees. And I'm going to drop to all fours. Okay. We've got this. We're in this together. We're doing this working out. 
together. Oh, it feels great. Sit up. Oh, sit up. Okay. Oh, I hope you're enjoying this exercises. I hope it's something different, something new. If it wasn't something new for you, I hope you're enjoying having someone to work out with. Half word. Because I'm sure enjoying working out with you. We may not be in the same room, but we are here together. Because I'm on your television in your house. Oh, this feels so good. We're almost there. This is Lunch. the last room. Yes. Oh, let's do these lunges together. Perfect form. Don't lose your form. Keep it moving. 90, 90. Push it off with that leg. Now, you've done a fantastic job. Woo, we are done. So, I'm so happy you joined me today. I hope that you will come back and do some new exercise routines with me. I'll be working on some creative stuff. Is that I enjoy showing new exercises to young people. I like to see that y'all, that you will take this with you further in life and put exercise as a part of your daily routine. From your timer is complete. Now and forever. Time's up. It was great to work out with you today. Woo! Keep it going, kiddos! Hi, my name is Charlene Schreiner. I'm a mental health provider with the St. Tammany Parish Public School System. Exercising is one way that we can use our body to reduce stress, build self-confidence, and self-esteem. So the next time you're feeling down, try using a hula hoop. And it might make you feel happy again. Before we left school, we were studying the sun, and today we're going to do experiments using the sun. All right, here's our first science experiment working with the sun. 
we know that the sun is super bright and also very hot. So today we're going to see how long it's going to take to melt these ice cubes. You'll need a cup and some ice cubes. Put your ice cube in the sun and time how long you think it will take to melt. About one minute. It's been four minutes. Hmm. I wonder if it will take five or six minutes. Okay. I don't want to ruin the surprise and tell you how long it will take for the, the ice cube to melt. So now it's your turn. Have fun. Let me know how long it took for your ice cube to melt in the comments below. Another fun experiment you can try is putting the ice cubes out at different times of the day. I put mine out at 11 o'clock in the morning. Maybe you can try putting it out at maybe early in the morning, in the afternoon, and evening, and see which one melts the fastest. Which one do you think will melt the fastest? Morning, afternoon, or evening? Let me know in the comments below. I am Miss Christy Becknell. I teach art for St. Tammany. I teach kindergarten, first, second, third, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And today we're going to do some process art. What is process art? Well, it's when we try to figure things out. What I did was I went out and I tried to find different things to make paint out of. Now, when we look at our color wheel, we see that we have our warm colors at the top. The warm colors remind us of warm things like the sun, lava, and fire. And our cool colors are at the bottom of the color wheel. They remind us of things like green grass in our toes, blue water, and purple grapes that taste so good right out the refrigerator. Mm -mm -mm, they're so cool. Well, if you don't have paint, what can you do? Well, you can find some things to make your own paint. This is dirt. Ooh. Let's see what it looks like. Dirt. We have here coffee. I'd put some warm water in some coffee and it wound up looking like this. This is paprika. You might find this in your parents' cabinet. And paprika, if you mix that with a little warm water, it's very beautiful, sort of orange. This is some food coloring. I just added some water to it. Food coloring looks like this. This was made from some sprinkles. There's a fruit fly. Sprinkles. So I took some sprinkles and I separated them out and I just put blue and green in here to make turquoise. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, it's very light. And then I took some of these crystals, these sugar crystals that you put on a cake. And I mix those with some warm water. Let's see what that looked like. And what's this? Blackberries. You can make paint out of a blackberry? Let's see. Whoa, look at that. You can find all kind of things. You could take the peeling from an onion and soak it in some water and that'll make a color that you can use as well. And if you don't have a paintbrush, what can you use? You could use a Q-tip. You could use a rolled up napkin or tissue or a towel even. You could even use your finger to finger paint. But be careful because these will stain your clothes. Make sure that you wear an old clothes when you do that. Well, let's think about what we can do. I'm going to get a piece of paper. And let's see, I have a blackberry here. I wonder if I smash it on the paper, what it'll do. 
look at that. I can paint with the blackberry. Hmm, maybe I can make a blackberry out of blackberries. Ooh, it's so smushy. Let's try something else. Ooh, look at my hands. How's about maybe we could make a pretty landscape painting. Here's that paprika. If I made a horizon line and then I drew my house at the top. Don't forget the roof. What else could I do here? Hmm. Maybe I could have some birds in the sky. I want to try finger painting this time. That bird's upside down. That's better. What about some clouds in the sky? Hmm, let's try this napkin. I'm going to turn that upside down bird into a cloud. Maybe, maybe I need different color. Oh, there it goes. I'm going to leave it up to you. I want you to come up with some ideas. Maybe I can make a tree. So I want you to try these things. I want you to try making some paints and then make something out of those paints. You know what? I bet your art teacher would love to see what you made. Email them and let them know what you did. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. You did a great job learning how to do process art. Keep watching this so we can keep learning. Watch videos daily on STPPS TV or on the website stpsb.org. See you again real soon.